Hi folks, I'm um, just doing, doing some sanding here. Um, I'm not going to bore you with the complete sanding process, but basically what I do to do these larger pieces is I just take some MDF and then I use some spray adhesive and I put on these full sheets of sanding paper. Um, I believe this is an 80 grit. It's fairly aggressive. And I can run these long lengths along here. Now as you can see it's not perfectly flat and I'm not trying to get this perfectly flat. I'm not going to plane this down, use this to plane this down. I just want to get the high spots off and this is plastic and I can sort of strategically push on certain areas and then start to clean up these low spots. and get it pretty close to sanded. Now some of this I'm just going to hit hand sanding. I don't want to shave off a huge amount of this. It's not worth the effort. I just want to get most of the filament lines removed. Like these edges, I'll hand sand those. They've warped upwards. And if I try to plane this thing flat, you're going to remove layers of filament you don't want to remove. So this is good enough. I just want to get most of it taken care of. For the corner, for the edges here, I'll just kind of rock them upward. And they'll start to... I don't want to remove any contours or anything that I've already had. So you're getting, you see these are the high spots, they're getting knocked down. I can hand sand that later to get the rest of that. It's kind of just showing me where I need to spend extra time hand sanding. For hand sanding, I'm going to take a piece of paper and, and, and uh, work it on there to smooth that out finally. But, So now I'm moving on to the hand sanding part. So I'm just using one of these foam blocks. Uh, this one's like 150 grit. And it allows you to contour it around these corners. Without risk of flattening them out. If you go lightly, it'll maintain its flat surface, but if you push on it, it'll start to conform. Okay, so now I'm just using this 100 grit flexible paper which gets into these contours really easily. Well that's pretty good for now. As you can see it's pretty dusty. But that's actually okay. I got the back on now to help get the edges flush. Good. So the reason why I don't care too much about the dust is because being that this is ABS, we have to use that dust to our advantage. So, got some acetone here. Since ABS dissolves in acetone, we're just going to smooth it out the best we can using a heavy duty paper towel. And that will greatly help us with the sanding. So, as you can see, you can just 
use this to sort of kind of smooth it out. I don't have to be worried too much about it. We're going to sand it again. But this will help get some of the uh, scratch marks and everything out. that uh, firm up because it, it does melt the plastic and then we'll come back and hit with some more acetone all right there we are after our acetone bath um, you can still see some scratches and things on there that's fine but uh, I'm probably going to hit it with some um, 100 again and move to a 150 and kind of get it down to a 220 and, and then I think at that point we can start priming it and it'll look pretty smooth. So I'm just finishing up with some flexible sandpaper 220 on a foam block to sort of get the contours figured out. The way it should look. Very dusty, but what I'm going to do is dust it off. Just using some paper towels and then take it over to the painting table. Okay, I'm going to be uh, just giving it a coat of this. Uh, two-in-one sanding primer. It's an automotive primer, but it has a filler, so it'll fill in some of the imperfections. You can use uh, this stuff as well. Uh, either one will work. It's a little harder to find this, I found, for some reason. Okay, here we are, um, all primed now, and what I did is I hit it with, I don't know, maybe four or five coats and then sanded with some 220 in between each time. Um, you want to get all the little imperfections out, it's going to be, you're not going to be able to sand all that 3D filament out, uh, there'll be some pits and things. So, I just used some of this, uh, modeling putty uh, for, for like scale models for um, filler. Any little imperfections you put it on and sand it out and hit it with uh, the primer again. So now I'm going to hit it with the Malachite color. This is like the perfect BMO color I think. It, it 
comes out almost exactly to the reference colors from Cartoon Network that I've seen. If you check the CMYK values on this thing. And I'm going to put this back box in temporarily while I paint because this will hold the top plate in. I don't want to get a lot of paint on the edges, so I'm going to paint it like that. And then we'll be ready for final assembly. Okay, we're ready for the clear coat. Um, I'm going to use uh, this Montana varnish semi-gloss. Gloss works well too. Um, pretty easy stuff to apply. Goes on, dries pretty quick. So I'll start with the back panel just to get a good idea how well it's working. Clear any dust off. Well, here we are with the final clear coat put on top. I gave this two days to cure. Um, it's pretty tough stuff, but if, if you start messing around with it before it's fully cured, you can like leave a thumbprint in there. Accidentally, I've done it, so it, don't be impatient. Just let it cure. Um, I also went ahead and made the legs and the arms in the same way. They're 3D printed and I just sanded them and then I hit them with um, some more of this Montana paint. For the arms I use this uh, this blue, uh, it's called pool blue. I guess it's the color of a pool. Um, for the legs I have this uh, iron curtain gray which sounds pretty ominous. And then I finish it off with a, a matte color varnish um, because I, I didn't want it to shine as much. Uh, so I think the color of the arms and legs is kind of arbitrary. They change throughout the cartoon depending on who's coloring them. But I like the, the contrast and it looks pretty good. And then I got my um, buttons and things printed out and other parts. All the electronics uh, are ready to go for final assembly. So the last thing to do for the body though is to put on 
the signature BMO side decals. And to do that, I use this, um, these are just vinyl. It sticks really well, so I use this rapid tack stuff because once if you put it on dry, it stays. Um, that's why they use these for like window decals, you know, rain and UV. They never seem to come off at that point. But this stuff will let you slide it around and be a little bit less precise while you're putting it on. So, first thing you got to do is remove the sticky side of it. And this top piece is just called transfer paper, which should hold the pieces in place until they're finally assembled. So, yay. Now I just need to add some transfer fluid here. Put a little on the sticker. And then you just line it up. Um, that hole there is the registration point. So I can pick it up and remove it now. I'm moving around. Sometimes it's easier to go from the inside so you can see where the hole is. And then when it's finally in roughly the right spot, I'm um, just sort of squeegee out any of the uh, application fluid you can. You don't have to get it all out, it will evaporate. Just make sure enough of it comes out. So when you pull this off, it will leave the sticker. Which will want to still come up a little bit. So be careful. dry it off. So that's that one and then you do the second one. Um, So, with both of those on there, you gotta do uh, up here. We got this dot area here that hides the uh, microphone. And I don't need any special transfer fluid. I think I'll just go for it on this. So that is the dot. And we'll hide the microphone and then our fake cartridge slot will just be hidden by a strip of black. And there you have it. Here's this front panel. Um, so I think that's all the graphics and everything we need. Uh, this is the back panel which I had already painted as well. It's got this back box glued in. And then this panel comes off and it has magnets to hold it in. This will be the battery compartment. It's kind of cool. And finally we have all the electronics ready to go as well and that will be the next video where I will assemble everything and you will have a fully functioning BMO gaming console full size completely 3D printed. So uh, stay tuned.